Well, greetings to you. It's uh, a great shame that our country seems to be collapsing round our ears. And I'm going to see if I can perhaps tell you why. Uh, there's a number of things happened slowly over the years. I'm an old man now and I've seen it happen bit by bit. The boiled frog kind of syndrome. And you don't know you're dead until it's too late. Now we build a great empire on the basis of a parliamentary democracy and a constitutional monarchy, a free press, uh, the principles of English law, the 1688 Bill of Rights, the Toleration Acts of the same year. Uh, we can go back also to uh, Magna Carta, if you will, although that's slightly ephemeral, but the concept of Anglo-Saxon law and national justice Justice being, by definition, what the man on the Clapham omnibus would deem to be fair. Now, we've abandoned all this. All our institutions have been abandoned. The principles of English law have been abandoned. The writ of habeas corpus has been suspended for Julia Assange, who's been locked up now for years without fair trial. Uh, it's, it's disgraceful. It's an embarrassment to what should be a free country. The civil service has been politicised. The National Trust uh, is full of woke wokeism. Uh, all charities have been politicised. Their chief executive officers earn fortunes. The education system is hopeless. Our children are taken away by the state and educated in both fake science and Lord only knows what which is why home education is growing, because people do not want to expose their children to this kind of thing. We have a national broadcasting company, the BBC Corporation, uh, the BBC, who possibly hate this country. They hate us, they hate our institutions, and they hate our past. So we don't have a free press, and most people still sadly get their information from the BBC. An institution, if you don't pay, in spite of there being 60 free channels, if you don't pay them, you go to prison. We're not a free society. Ludicrous. Let's look at our police force. Totally politicised. Absolutely hopeless. Don't know what they're doing. And the, uh, the lockdown showed that. Uh, they didn't have a clue. Lockdown itself. Immoral. Illegal. Uh, and now... We're looking back at the cost and we still have no apologies. Nobody's apologising. Now, a lot of people write to me and say, well, what can we do? Uh, we all know this to be true. Well, I've written an article for Going Postal, which I have uh, carefully put together a manifesto, a manifesto. And it's very radical. You might think it's radical, but a lot of what I put in, there are over 30 bullet points on it, uh, have something that have been tried and tested in the past. So I'd like you to have a look at those and see what you think. And at first sight, as I say, you'll think they're radical, but it's the only thing that can save us. One of the problems that we have in this country is the party political system. You can't change anything because you can only vote red or blue. Same in North America. You vote red or blue, you get a red Muppet or a blue Muppet, but they're all Muppets, so you can't move further forward. Now, one of the things, and I don't intend to go through them, I'd like you to read them yourself, is that we must have parliamentarians who stand up and say what they, at election time, say, this is what I believe in. They should be forbidden to wear a blue or red badge. Totally forbidden. Uh, so you know what that man uh, stands for or that woman stands for, and you can elect them on that basis. Representative democracy, so-called, has failed because it represents no one. Have you ever met anybody in the last 10 years who think the government are doing a good job? And we can't do anything about it because we can't vote them out. Now, as everybody knows, I was a Brexiteer and forget whether you're for or against, that doesn't matter. The point is when we had proportional representation, a lot of people came up to me and said, I'm going to vote this time because my vote counts. They will count my vote. It's not hidden in red or blue. And that's what they did. And a lot of people told me they hadn't voted for years because they didn't think it was there was any point. Uh, and they did. And we've got to get back to that. So what's the first thing we can do? We've got the May elections coming up, the local government elections. What's the first thing that you can do? Vote for any independent candidate. Even if you can't stand the blighter, 
vote for him because we've got to get back to voting for independent parliamentarians and government at the town hall. What's all this business about 15 minute cities in Bath, in Canterbury uh, and all these uh, cities this is absolutely outrageous and Oxford. You didn't vote for that. Nobody voted for that. Nobody wants it. And now it's being policed by uh, thugs with no authority whatsoever. We've got to sweep them away. And you've got to vote independent. The people in Plymouth, the government, the, uh, a local government there, cut down all those beautiful trees. Absolutely scandalous. They should go to prison for that. Vandalism. Vote independent. That's what you can do to kick off with in May. And what's the other thing you can do? Stop paying the bloody BBC, all right? Stop paying them. If you send them their 150 quid a year, you are part of the problem. If you're an ordinary, hardworking Joe and you pay the BBC, you're wasting your time. They hate you. They hate your family. They hate everything about you. Let's get rid of the BBC and we can get some channels telling the truth. That would be a nice change. And we could take the first hesitant step back to a free press. Instead of the BBC and other uh, government shills, as it were, tell, always peddling, peddling the government line. And we had three years of this through this COVID scam, scamdemic uh, without anybody standing up and telling the truth about it. This is the problem. We have to get a free press back. And another thing we could start with is that they could free Julian Assange, couldn't they, to, to, to make a statement. We could make a statement that we're getting back to the principles of English law. That would be good. Think about these things. Have a look at that going postal uh, and see what you think. We've got to start fighting back. And that's not just here. It's in Western Europe. It's in North America. We've all ordinary taxpaying people who have been abused and vilified. We have to fight back. And it would also be useful if the Church of England buckled too as well, instead of all this wokeism that we have from the Archbishop of Canterbury. Bloody useless, Archbishop. And of course, his boss is actually the king, head of the, uh, uh, the Anglican Church. A World Economic Forum stooge, like the Prime Minister and the Chancellor of the Exchequer. We voted to take back control when we voted for Brexit. We haven't. We've just subcontracted our government to the World Economic Forum. The WHO are now going to make all our decisions when it comes to health and the United Nations and the, and, and the IMF. We haven't taken back from Parliament doesn't have any say in any of this at all. And they've just renewed the COVID restrictions that we had for another six months without any parliamentary debate. We have to get back to a parliamentary, a real parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy. And there's a question mark, I'm sad to say, over the monarchy just at the moment. And I speak as a monarchist. Let's sweep these people away. Uh, as most of you know, my work is very heavily independently research based uh, and I get my information from all over the world. It would help if you press the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, because the more subscribers I have, uh, the more likely it is that international uh, independent research institutes will share their material with me. It's most helpful. And then, of course, I'll automatically share it with you. Uh, so surprise won't cost you anything. Uh, thank you very much.